the rugged terrain and unpredictable weather can make flying in Papua New Guinea the ultimate test for any pilot. Negotiating the country's fog-clad mountains all too often ends in disaster. Many have perished over the years. But the all-important question what caused these accidents is really answered. In recent years, we've had two fatal accidents we've never got on the ground to. Fatal. Now, that would be unheard of anywhere in the world. I see the bits and pieces and I'm very, very sad and I'm upset that this trigger shouldn't be here. The information that should have been analysed from each of those accidents is now not available to use to prevent further accidents and that is a very, very serious issue. Tonight, we throw the spotlight on an aviation industry in crisis. It's the backbone of Papua New Guinea's transport system. But in the last decade, aviation safety standards have nosedived. In my opinion, it's fallen off the edge. Mount Hagen is in the heart of the PNG Highlands, where tribal wars are still fought and unemployment runs high. Few here get the chance to be passengers on planes, let alone fly them. Not far from the ransacked shops is a tribute to one of the town's favourite sons. His mother and father pay him a daily visit. At 27 years old, Patrick Kunden was a pilot and the pride of his family. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm only glad you start rolling. May him never you come up with blood. May him give He was one of those very rare sons I raised him up. He never failed me from the preschool right up to high school and from the flying school. He never failed me. Did he really enjoy flying into those remote places? Yes, he did. He did. He really liked flying. Patrick Kunden's aviation star was indeed on the rise. He was on his way to becoming an international pilot when tragedy struck. Everybody liked him and he was... They rang around 6.30 in the night and they said, did you know that the plane went down? Uh, we... Sorry. It's OK, take your time. Veronica Kundam was told her son's plane had plunged into the East New Britain jungle. Both Patrick Kundam and his co-pilot were killed. And I said, no, it can't be. This after that, I didn't know what happened to me. I didn't know. Still today, I didn't want to talk about it. The crash happened more than 18 months ago. Yet the Kundan family is still waiting for the cause of the accident to be determined. I feel for the family. There, there is no closure to this. And... Um, because of uh, because due process uh, has not been allowed to take place from within our department, I would venture to say that, sadly, um, it never will be. And you see here in, in the wreckage trail, that's a right-hand engine. So the right-hand right wing is the first thing that struck. 
Sydney O'Toole has been investigating accidents in PNG since the 1980s. He's upset at the falling standards. And, uh, we can't leave the occupants in the bush for days. No, I think from around the, the middle to the late 80s, I think it's been on a downhill trend ever since. Right? Information gathered from air crash investigations is vital in preventing further accidents. But it's not just one or two accidents that I'm talking about here. Over the past few years, no less than 19 crashes have only been partially or not investigated at all, leaving the families of the deceased angry and demanding answers. I'm heading for the Eastern Highlands. The isolation of the people below brings home just how important aviation is to their survival. In some parts, people have to walk four days to the nearest medical facility. For many years, Australian pilot Ian Leslie crisscrossed these valleys and rivers, delivering goods to the locals. Until one day, he didn't come home. The Victorian's single-engine Cessna slammed into the mountain here four years ago. Ian Leslie's body was recovered, but the wreckage wasn't. I called them um, four times every month, and they never. They said they will come, they will come, and they never come. Matthew E. Partu thought of Ian Leslie as a father. Both he and the Leslie family in Melbourne are still in the dark as to why he died. They forget Ian Leslie and they've done nothing. And they never take the records out and they never complete his report. Air crash investigators did actually visit the site. But when they arrived, local villagers demanded $10,000 for guarding the wreckage. So me play walking bunnies. Larem Balus is having child of bunnies, and me play low out him. Now, me play weight load this year, or one for government body by come that. This is happening on virtually every accident. I get um, surrounded by 15, 20 people who are all armed, right, uh, demanding very large amounts of cash out of me on the spot. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty intimidating. The last time Matthew E. Partu was here, Ian Leslie's plane was still in one piece. Now, after four years, it's been plundered by villagers. Wings lie in gardens, while the engine block rusts away in an empty field. All the record has, has been gone, and I don't know what the Department of Civil Aviation is going to do. How did this get here? The kids uh, pulled them down. Dragged them down. Dragged them down. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, Investigators have no money to do anything. <laughs> Air crash investigations are an expensive business, some exceeding a million dollars, depending on how isolated the accident site. But it's not just a cost issue. Insiders say it's a combination of corruption and incompetence. These problems are widely talked about in the aviation industry, but few people are willing to speak publicly about it. There seems to be a culture of fear within the industry here. One insider told us that if he spoke to us, he feared the government would revoke his visa. The government admits aviation has been neglected. It has been um, insufficient. Um, uh, funding for such works to upkeep the maintenance of our... Um, uh, airports and airstrips to help Papua New Guinea, not only in the aviation but also in other sectors as well. In the past seven years, air crashes in PNG have killed 19 people, including three Australians. 
the air safety investigation branches cash trapped and virtually grounded. Worse still, investigators have had no legal clout to do their job. Since the introduction of a new Civil Aviation Act several years ago, there's been no accident investigation commission. We have no legal mandate to do anything. In other words, we can't legally go to an accident site. We can't interview people. We can't recover items off an aircraft for further, for further work. So if we have a major prank here, right, we, we can't do a damn thing. My mother and me, we, we were in the house cry for almost a year. And as the Kundans discovered, even if Sydney O'Toole's team investigate accidents, the findings would have no legal standing in court. We can't bring Patrick back. We have to fight it in court. So and that's why the Kundan family is now suing the government for negligence. Because we're going to fight against the state. I'm very sorry. I, uh, I'm sorry for the families uh, who lost uh, loved ones um, in those uh, crashes. Um, uh, I must uh, say it was a, a slackness on the part uh, of the system uh, in getting the uh, Air Investigation Commission and its structure established. The Kundan family launched its own investigation, visiting the crash site, taking photos and witness statements. Patrick Kundan's employer, Airlink, had a poor safety record. After four crashes in seven years, it ceased operating. The Kundans remain convinced Patrick's death was not pilot error. He has been experienced few, few of his flights who have been ancient failed. He managed to land it. Now you're telling me that my son is a, a pilot hero? No. No. He's the best pilot. And I lost him. I lost him. Now those crew, two crew, knew they were in a lot of trouble and they would have been screaming mayday, mayday, you know, and all the sort of thing. There's absolutely, unarguably, no question about it. But once again, the aviation safety system broke down. Four days after the crash, Sydney O'Toole asked the transmission centre for the recordings of the pilot's distress calls. But he was told the tapes had already been reused. Instead of having the required 65 tapes to save two months of recordings, the centre had only four. Can you imagine what the crew could have told us? Now, that information is gone forever. See, an accident is, is not one event. Right, an accident is a, a chain of events. But if you interrupt that chain of events, right, you'll prevent an accident from happening and you may finish up with an incident. That's the difference. Right? Mount Hagen is one of PNG's busiest hubs and the country's second international airport. But the facilities and the support are inadequate. It's drill time for the airport firemen. The crew have new uniforms, but their truck, donated by Ausaid, is old and often breaks down. And that's not the only problem. And how many firefighters do you have at the moment? At the moment, uh, we have four firemen with one DFO on two shifts. Is that enough manpower to, uh, to handle a, an accident here? If I can, I can rescue one man or two. And looking at 70, 80 passengers will burn their life. <laughs> For people in the aviation industry, this is what horrifies them. <laughs> The Garuda Airlines accident in Jongjakarta last year killed 21 people, including five Australians. 
According to aviation experts, these scenes could be repeated at Mount Hagen. We've just seen it in Indonesia with the Garuda accident, and it is a very, very serious issue. If they have a major accident with an F-100 or a Dash 8 with 50 passengers on board, it, um, it would be you know, catastrophic because you simply don't have the manpower to deal, deal with that accident, um, as we saw with Jogokata. Mount Hagen Airport is no better prepared than Jogokata. And Sydney O'Toole predicts it won't be long before a major accident exposes PNG's failures. That's why he's speaking out. I don't do this job for the good of my own health. <laughs> um, but someone has to make a stand somewhere. You know. Um, well, someone has to. That's a feeling the Kundan family know all too well. Steve, this is life we're talking about. There must be an investigation. We must get to the bottom of it and we must know and we must inform the immediate families. Whether it's a technical fault, whether it's a pilot error, these things got to be known. There's not a moment in my life that I don't think about him. And I think that's I can say now. Thank you.